So now we're going to apply word problems to decimals. So we might be adding, subtracting, multiply, or dividing our decimals in these problems. This gives us an idea of how you might use them in real life. So the first thing you want to figure out is what operation is happening. In number one, we read that Manisha purchased a box of pencils for $1.28 and gave the cashier $10. How much change should she get back? What do you think? Get back are some key words, right? Our numbers are 10 and $1.28. So what kind of operation should we use? Subtraction, right? So go ahead and subtract these and see what you get. And the answer is $8.72. Go ahead and complete numbers 2, 3, 4, and then stop at 5. We'll talk about that one. For number 5, we read that Emilio's batting average, his first year playing baseball, was 89 thousandths. His second year, he improved to an average of 29 hundredths. His third year, he improved even more to an average of 329 thousandths. What is Amelia's average over three years? So let's start there. We always want to answer whatever questions being asked in a word problem. So the first question is finding the average over the three years. How do you find an average? Well, that's the same thing as what? The mean, right? So what do you do to find the mean? Add up all the numbers and then divide by how many numbers you have, right? So we're going to add up this number, this number, and this number. And whatever our sum is, what do we do? Divide by how many numbers we have, which is three. So you can figure that out. Then the next thing we're asked is what is the difference between his third and first year averages? What's the key word in that question? Difference. And what does difference ask you to find? It asks you to subtract, right? That's the operation it's talking about. So go ahead and try these two problems and check back and you'll see the answer to make sure you did these correctly. So the average, you end up with the sum of 0.708 and then you divide that by 3 and get 0.236. The difference, you have to take the best number, which is his uh, last year, and then subtract the very first year to see his improvement from the beginning to the end and you get 24 hundredths. Try number 6 and check back to see how you did. And number 6, we're asked to find how much money Chanel has left after purchasing some pencils. So what do you do when you are being asked how much money someone has left? That's subtraction, right? But this one's a little bit trickier because we have four items that cost the same amount each. So whenever you have a group that has the same amount for each group, what do you do? You multiply, right? So 4 times 0.28 gives you the total amount that was spent on pencils, which ends up being $1.12. And then we have a $5 bill, so we're going to subtract, and we end up with $3.88 as our change. Try number 7. Next, try number 8. Let's do number 9 together. So this reads that a train took 1.2 hours to go 73.8 miles from Cary to Fayetteville and we're asking to find the rate of the train. So what you want to do is work with what's called um, unit rate and this is where we're going to be finding miles per hour. In order to find miles per hour Let's set up 73.8 miles over 1.2 hours as a ratio or fraction because what we want to figure out is how many miles in one hour. That would be the rate. So what would you do to figure out how many miles in one hour? Well, if I wanted to change 1.2 hours to one hour, what would I do to 1.2 to get one? 
I would divide by 1.2, right? And since this is a fraction, if you divide the denominator by 1.2, what do you have to do to the numerator? The same. We have to divide both by 1.2. When you divide by 1.2 in the numerator and denominator, you get 61.5 miles in the numerator and one hour in the denominator. So this is 61.5 miles per hour. In the next problem, I am told that I have a pile of DVDs. Each DVD has a height of 0.3 centimeters, and I'm told that the pile is 7.5 centimeters tall, and I'm asked how many DVDs are in the pile. Do you have any idea what operation to use here? Well, I know the total height of my pile of DVDs. I know the height of each DVD. And I'm trying to figure out how many DVDs there are. So here we have a total. We have the height of each individual thing in that total and we want to know how many individual things there are. So what do you think? Which, which operation? This is division. So go ahead and give this one a shot and check back to see how you did. So in number 10 you end up with this tall pile of DVDs, 7.5 centimeters uh, tall. And so that was the total pile. And then we know that each individual DVD is 0.3 centimeters. And we want to know how many DVDs there are. So we're going to divide 7 and 5 tenths by 3 tenths. Remember to move that decimal over because we can't divide by a decimal. We can have the decimal um, in, underneath the um, division bar. That's fine in the dividend, but we cannot have it in the divisor. So we move the decimal place over once to get a 3, so we have a whole number to divide by. And since we moved it there, we have to move it also um, in the 75. 3 goes into 75 25 times, therefore we have 25 DVDs.